Okay, this is my brain splat, right? There is hope in the golf swing because I've figured out how to do it properly, like I was doing many, many years ago, right? Ripping the ball, not even thinking about it, but getting a feeling that was unbelievable, like no feeling ever before. And it's all to do with understanding the actual sort of physics and mechanics of the golf swing because there's so much shit out there now, right? You're just completely confused. You're thinking about every single body part, when it's moving, what time it's moving, when it finishes, when it slows down, you know what I mean? So the golf swing is physics, right? You've got your body or biomechanics, we call it, how your body's designed to move, right? There's a simple way that we can swing the golf club if we sort of use the, the, the biomechanics properly. Um, but then you've got the forces in the golf swing. There's a hell of a lot of, go um, hell of, a lot of forces in the swing. And the key is to harness those forces because when you harness them, you're able to develop effortless club head speed, um, you know, and consistently square the club face up without manipulation, right? You shouldn't be doing anything with the hands when you're swinging down at the ball, you know, trying to bend your wrist, bow your wrist. You shouldn't be trying to, you know, you shouldn't be trying to put yourself in a particular position. That's the whole problem, right? So I've been working hard over the past 12 months really to, to get all this together for you and, and put it across really, really simply. You know, if you looked at all my videos before, you'll see I just talk in a normal language, okay? Black and white, and it's the best way we learn. You know, if you look at, you know, really good um, presenters on the TV, you know, scientists and people like that, you know, all have, they've got all the, the knowledge and they know all the, the numbers and maths behind the, the universe and everything that they're talking about. They've got a way of putting it across so simple that a child could understand it and, and visualize it and then be able to do it. And that, that's what this is about. That's, that's what GeForce Golf is about. Getting rid of all the layers and layers of crap that are built up over the years and getting to the really good stuff, right? Because the, the stuff that I look at, no one's looking at. The stuff that I look at, there's, you know, videos on YouTube, for example, that probably have just a few hundred hits. You know, some of the others would have a few thousand maximum, right? And, and that's where the answers lie. The answers are not lying with your highly marketed golf pro or, you know, top teachers of the year, right? The answers are with the people who've done the research, people like myself, um, the professors out there, the sports scientists who've done all of the research and done the testing to prove the answers to the golf swing, you know, how the swing works, how we should go about practicing it, um, and how everything that is currently out there being pushed to you is destroying your golf swing. So what I've been doing over the past few weeks, you know, this is just one session here is hitting shots thousands of shots right because I've, I've got it back now i know exactly how the swing should feel you can do it doesn't matter how old you are right because it's about being efficient efficient with your body movement efficient with the golf club uh, more importantly it's about understanding the forces that you create in the golf swing because there's a lot of forces going on we've got g-force one of the reasons why I call my company G-Force Golf because G-Force is a measurement of acceleration felt as weight, right? So we've all seen that James Bond film where he gets into the centrifuge, that thing that's spinning around, um, works a bit like this, ball on a string. So James Bond is in here, and then you've got the pivot point, the fixed point of rotation here, and it twirls around, doesn't it? And he feels the G-Force. So you got G-Force in your swing, right? You've got to figure out how you're going to use it. Obviously, you want to pick up a G-Force swing trainer. It's massively going to help you out <clears throat> because on my brain splat, I did find really three key things um, that you've got to do in the swing. And it's it's not so much about positions, which, which is obviously what you're probably thinking about at the moment, trying to get into a position, but it's more about how do you harness the forces in the golf swing? So the golf swing is rotation. Okay, so we stand there, we're rotating, we, we're staying pretty centered. And it works a little bit, well, it basically works like the ball on a string. I've always shown this in my videos for many, many years now. You know, a lot of people don't really get it, but hopefully you'll get it now. But 
you know, I'm twirling this ball around, this ball's spinning around in a circle, all right, it's going pretty quick. So the force acting on the golf ball uh, is called centrifugal force. So the centrifugal force is the force that works away from the center of rotation. So here's the center of rotation, me spinning that around, and then central centrifugal force is going in this direction. So when you swing a golf club, okay, guess what? what force you're creating in that, that swing on the club head, centrifugal force or G-force. You know, imagine James Bond in that capsule at the end of your club head, G-force, right? Same sort of thing, just to simplify it. But there's one other force going on for me to speed this ball up, go quicker at it, and you know, move it around where I want with predictability. I'm using another force Okay, I'm pulling back in the opposite direction to centrifugal force. So I'm pulling back and that's called centripetal. It's a center seeking force. It works towards the center of rotation. So centrifugal is going that way. I'm pulling this way and it keeps the string taut, right? Really, this is sort of how the shafts work as well. Um, they load and unload, but obviously we want them taut when we get to the ball. So I'm pulling back in the opposite direction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And the harder I pull, the faster the ball travels. So when you swing this golf club, if we do everything correctly, if you understand what I'm gonna talk about over the next few videos, we're actually gonna be pulling on the, on the golf club. We're pulling on the grip end of the club because we need to use centripetal force, which is the pulling force towards the center rotation. We're gonna use that to speed up the club and square it up automatically no manipulation nothing right because you shouldn't be doing anything with this golf club right that's what you got to understand um you know i found something out in the transition as well which is really really important you know there's, a, there's such a big hit impulse from the top of the swing and i'm guilty myself when i'm hitting shots here straight away i can tell i was too quick in the transition, it was rushed, right? So imagine a swing in a park, because again, this is exactly how your swing works and how the transition's gonna work for you as well. So you got a swing, got the kid in the swing, you, you know, they give them a push and it starts swinging back and through, doesn't it? Okay, what you do when the, the swing is swinging down, you, you let it come down a little bit before you push the seat, don't you? All right, so you let it, you let it change direction, so it's swinging back, okay, it finishes its cycle, it comes down, and then, and then you push it, yeah? You push the momentum to speed it up. So what's gonna happen, and we've all done this, what's gonna happen if you push too soon, all right? Kids going back, you push a little bit early, okay, the, the chains lose tension, all right? Kids shaking around and everything's going all over the place, all right? Same thing happens with your club, the G4 swing trainer. When you transition, if, if you don't time it, if you don't do it smooth enough, um, if you don't get it right, you know, if you, you're coming down before the swing's finished its, its back swing cycle and started down, then you're gonna get this wobble in, in, the, in the shaft. You're gonna feel it. So it's really smoothing that transition out. And the, the down swing is a gradual acceleration. So we're not looking to go from, you know, when the swing stops, we don't wanna, go down like super, super quick. We're going quick because I can show you that in gears in 3D where the hands go from, you know, slowing down and stopping and accelerating to zero to 20 mile an hour to about the halfway point. And then, and then they slow down again as the club releases. So, you know, they accelerate, but it's not like a, a forced one, it's gradual. It's like the swing coming down. It's, it's coming down on its own uh, weight or momentum and then and then as it comes down it's building speed we can then catch that momentum and push it okay your swing works the same we come down it's really hard to do you feel like you're not gonna hit the ball anywhere right but trust me right you come down slow and then you feel the weight right you feel the weight of the club you feel the momentum and it's something you probably never felt before in your life but you feel it, you catch it, like the swing, you feel that swing, and then you push it, right? 
I say push it, you're actually probably, well, I say push it, you, you, you're more sort of pulling, pulling through to speed it up. But it, it does feel like that, it feels like you're catching that weight and you can feel it. And it's an unbelievable feeling because you, you just, you know you've got it. And that's how the best players in the world swing. And that's how they can repeat it over and over again. Um, you know, hit the, the sweet spot consistently out in the middle over and over again shape the ball do what they want with it because they've got that that move they've got the physics of the swing everything's working properly um obviously in the golf swing we're not continually rotating so we, do, we don't keep spinning around like this it doesn't happen like that there's a point where i mean that was just to show you the the forces in the swing but there's a point where we, we come down and, and the hands and arms actually decelerate they slow down and and then the shaft and the club head kick forward so yeah, it was a few years ago now when I did, I got this exact same feeling on the range and I had um, three iron, I've got it here actually. Probably like the hardest three iron in the world to hit. McGregor blades, check them out. So I had this in my hand, three iron and butter knife. Obviously back in the day I used to hit ones and two irons easily, like a lot of us did. But I got it, the same feeling. And it just shot after shot after shot after shot. Straight, 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 like a bullet. And there was a particular feeling that I had, I could feel that weight as a, as a transition. It felt really smooth, felt like I was never gonna hit the ball anywhere. Typically, the longer the club you get in your hand, the harder you wanna go at it. And that, that was really difficult to do with this, this technique. Um, Call it a technique, but it's actually a concept. It's actually real. It's it's the law. It's it's physics, mechanics. It's everything. It's working together, right? So there's no. It's not an opinion. It's not me saying, okay, right. You know, I made this stuff up. This is actually how it works, right? So I can prove it, and I'm going to prove it because I think it's time that we got back to swinging properly, and we got rid of all of the crap that we don't need to focus on. Right, we've got to get back to playing good golf. I know a lot of really good players that this is going to help out. You know, if you're really good, you're going to pick this up really quickly because you probably did it when you were really young until you went and had some lessons and started getting coached out of it, right? So we've all got this natural ability to swing the club. And if we can understand a little bit about the physics and the mechanics, how your body works and, you know, the simplicity of the rotation and the forces and how to use them, we can get some seriously good golf played out there, whatever your level. Obviously, better players are going to pick this up really, really quick. Um, you need to hire us that, you know, you, there's, a, there's a battle there. You, you've got, you know, you've probably been coached and you've got all this stuff that you think you should be doing and trying to do. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to do it, right? You've got to, you've got to ask yourself, how's your game looked over the past year? Three years, five years, 10 years, 20, maybe 30 years, maybe 40 years. I know people that have been playing 40 years and they're still at 22, right? If you've been doing something 40 years, you want to be better than that really, don't you? So there's a massive amount of hope, right? This G-Force stuff I've been doing has is, is really been born out of my frustration. Um, you know, I, I started coaching in early 2000, got my PGA card and thought, yeah, this is it, I'm going out, I'm teaching, I'm going to earn some money, take the ladies out, you know, that's what it was all about. So I did that, I passed, got some lessons in, and I found teaching really, really difficult. It's really hard to teach someone how to play golf because you're a good player yourself, you know, but it's, it's really difficult putting that across to someone, good players play good because they can feel it, they can feel what they're doing, they just go out and repeat it, but then trying to explain that to someone and trying to get someone else completely different to do that thing is hard, right? So, you know, and I was looking for coaches back then, I was looking for mentors, someone that could help me to uh, teach and coach better, and there wasn't anything there, early 2000, you know, there wasn't a lot around, and I did try and find, you know, people that I could go and see, but, I was knocking on the wrong doors, you know, I was looking at the wrong stuff, 
Um, I was looking at coaches, you know, golf coaches, you know, teaching good players, and they were telling you what what their methods were, what they were doing, but actually the answers are in the physics books. That's where it is, science. And I'd always shied away from it. I, you know, you look at a science book and it's like, you open it out, it's, you know, it's this thick and the, the writing's a millimetre small and it's, you just put it down after a couple of sentences. It's, uh, it's off-putting, but there's a lot of really good simple stuff out there now. Um, and I can break that down for you and give you the, the right info. But as well as this transition bit I talked about, and I'm really feeling that slow, gradual acceleration, feeling the weight, catching the momentum and then going through. There's one real key point that you've got to get right. And you know, I'm gonna be explaining this a bit more in a bit more detail in some more videos that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw some stuff on the whiteboards as well so you can understand what I'm gonna be talking about, but what we have to do if you want to really catch that momentum, if you want to use the, the forces that I'm talking about, the centrifugal and centripetal forces, which give you predictability. I've talked about this in videos before. I've used this. Look how predictable that ball is when I twirl it around. I can move it around to any point with consistency, right? You can get your golf club swinging in the same way and you can go fast with it or you can go slow with it. So you're hitting a driver or you're hitting a wedge. Yeah, so it's really the same technique. But if you're gonna use these forces, you need to understand one thing and it's called your center of gravity, right? So imagine my chest is my center of gravity, okay? And we're in tug of war. This is the best example. You've got the rope one side, I've got it the other, okay? If I keep my center of gravity high, because I am, this is a high center of gravity, this is a lower one. So if I'm keeping it high and you apply a force on the rope pulling me towards you and I stay exactly where I am, where am I gonna go? Forward, right? So what do I do instinctively to, to stop that from happening? So you pull on the rope, as you start to pull, I'll go down. Okay, as you pull harder, I'll go lower, right? So you have to lower your center of gravity to be able to engage the forces and use them properly. Because if you start the downswing and that uh, centrifugal force starts acting on the club head and you haven't lowered yourself in anticipation for the amount of force acting on your body, because the golf swing is like a tug of war, imagine it like that. So if you're coming down trying to build up loads of speed and you're staying, staying high with your center of gravity, as the centrifugal force builds up, that force acting on your body, it's gonna pull you forward. It's gonna pull you in the direction of the ball because obviously the ball is here. And let's say we swing around our body at this sort of angle, like a 45 degree angle. So the centrifugal force is pulling, pulling us this way, right? So if you're thrusting your hips, they call it early extension these days as well, but if your hips are getting thrusted forward and stuff like that, it's because you're not lowering your center of gravity because you're getting pulled towards the golf ball because you don't understand that you've got to actually lower your center of gravity to withstand and harness the force of the centrifugal force which is pulling you forward. So it's always trying to pull you towards the golf ball and you've got to pull back in the opposite direction. You know, when you look at this, twirling the ball around that I'm doing, what's actually happening if we were to like slow it down, as the ball's going, let's say that as the ball's going up, I'm pulling down, I'm pulling in the opposite direction. So as the ball's going this way, for example, I'm pulling back this way, and, and then I'm able to pull it around in a circle. And that's what we're trying to do in the golf swing. And we can all do it, guarantee it, right? Because I, I can break this down, really simple. You know, you look at some of the stuff we've got on the board here, uh, relax, just drop your body, um, left foot forward, piston, left knee, like, you know, it's simple language, 
right? It's not a bunch of equations, which is what the golf swing has become now, right? This isn't, you know, you can imagine Isaac Newton, if he was right in the golf swing, I mean, what a great guy that would be to have a conversation with, but you can imagine him writing the golf swing on here would be a bunch of numbers and symbols and stuff that I haven't got a clue about, right? And it's some amazing stuff that these guys and girls um, figured out all those years ago. And that's what you've got to understand, the golf swing is not a, a, a unique movement on its own, right? It's not special, you're swinging a stick at the end of the day, that's what you're doing, right? There's, a, there's a, an easy way to do it, and it hasn't got, as most people believe, its own set of universal laws, right? So, you know, gravity, we're stuck on the floor, forces of motion, for every action as an equal and opposite reaction, um, it's all there, and it applies to your golf swing, no matter what anybody else tells you, right? Um, but there'd be a lot of people that tell you that water flows up upstream, uphill, and they're probably the sort of people that are able to levitate as well. So it's up to you, really. I've got the answers. I can guarantee that, yeah? And I want to give them to you. And you're going to get them, right? And it's going to be everywhere, all over the world, because it's... People need to know this stuff. It's got to, you know, it's got to come back. We've got to stop. We've got to stop digging this hole of complexity and just go back to where the answers are, which is science, and you know where all the studies are being done. Like so I say, I follow a lot of people that you've never heard of because I'm following the real researchers, people that have got the answers. Okay, so. Hope you can join me on this. I'm going to be knocking some videos out, probably starting maybe you know next week. So I'm going to talk you through initially the the mechanics of the swing. Okay, what what is it? Um, how does it work? You know, really, really simple. So we're going to do mechanics. We're going to do forces. That's the one I'm looking forward to because it does really make make a difference if you can understand that and actually be able to harness the forces because when you do it and you hit a shot and it feels like how I'm feeling it right now, you will just crave to get that feeling back because it's just the best feeling in the world. I know a lot of you have already had it and lost it, but I'm going to get it back for you pretty quickly. I'm also going to do a video on how I would practice. So like, you know, a 10 minute session, for example. So you're going to come, you're going to come in, morning, stiff, coffee. To do a 10 minute session to go through me hitting shots how I'd warm up as if you're not there okay because when I'm hitting balls I give myself feedback okay I'm not like oh what body part was doing this that and the other blah 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 my feedback is very different um, and it's very quick okay it's not complex I don't I don't video my swing you know apart from when I'm doing these videos so so I'm gonna hit a bunch of shots. I'm gonna be talking what I'm thinking in my head as if you're not there. And it's gonna give you like a, the perfect 10 minute practice routine from stiff warm up to fully loosened up, fully ripping it, like seriously ripping it. Um, and it'll be the best 10 minute routine you can do. And you need to do it every day, right? You have gotta do it every day. You can find 10 minutes every day to do it. You know, if you want to enjoy golf again, you've got to just find this 10 minutes, all right? And you've got to use these bunch of videos that I'm going to do um, to get you as good as you can get. It will get you back to where you were and, and beyond that, right? I know there's a lot of tour players that are really going to benefit from, from listening to what I've got to say. Getting rid of all of that crappy language that nobody understands. You know, no one, no one understands it you know it's, if you have to go to google and type in a word because you don't understand it then there's a problem there right big problem because i was having to do it all the time it's like geez what, what does what does this mean in the golf swing now and and a lot of words are getting made up now and it's just it's ridiculous so 
yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty simple this stuff and enjoyable. You know, nothing better than striking the ball solid. I'm going to show you how to do it. So I hope you can join me. Lots of stuff coming. Um, you know, my, any comments, just uh, put them in the, the description below and I'll, I'll do my best to, to answer back. Thanks for watching.